할렐루야 네, 오늘 예배 나오신 여러분들 진심으로 환영합니다 네, 오늘 하나님께서 우리가 드리는 모든 예배의 처소에서 우리 모두를 부르신 줄 믿습니다 오늘은 고난주간 셋째 날 결론의 날입니다 예수님께서는 오늘 하루 종일 아무것도 드시지 못하고 물한 모금도 못 드시면서 죄악된 영혼들을 회개시키고 결론하시기 위해서 말씀하셨습니다 오늘 이 시간 2000년 전의 변론의 날 그날에 우리에게 회개를 촉구하셨던 예수님의 말씀이 우리에게 하신 그 말씀인 줄 믿습니다 이 시간 우리가 예수님께 무릎 꿇고 회개하고 엎드릴 때 소망의 말씀과 축복의 말씀 허락하실 줄 믿으며 이 시간 그런 마음 가지고 함께 기도하시겠습니다 만유보다 크시고 우리 인간의 생사와 복을 주관하신 하나님 아버지 감사합니다 오늘 고난 주간 셋째 날을 맞이하여 아버지 앞에 모여 예배드리게 하시니 진심으로 감사드립니다 우리에게 본이 되신 예수님의 고난의 흔적을 따라갑니다 우리는 연약하고 부족하지만 이번 고난 주간 특별 예배를 통하여서 거듭나는 성도 모두가 될수 있도록 인도해 주시옵소서 또한 세상이 어지럽고 두려움과 고통으로 신음하고 있습니다 이럴 때일수록 우리가 먼저 감사하고 무엇보다 나라와 교회 또 우리 가정을 위해 엎드려 간절히 기도할 때 모든 것들이 완전히 회복되고 우리가 회개에 합당한 열매를 맺는 자들 될수 있게 인도해 주시옵소서 그리하여 우리 마음이 담대해지고 고난 가운데 소망과 시험을 이길 수 있는 믿음과 감사와 세임을 허락하여 주시옵소서 이 시간 찬양 드릴 때 홀로 영광 받아주시고 함께 해 주실 줄 믿고 감사드리며 사랑이 많으신 우리 주 예수님의 이름으로 간절히 기도드려옵나이다 아멘 함께 믿음으로 찬양하시겠습니다 웬말인가 날 위한 웬말인가 날 위하여 주 Amen. 
생자를 보내주시고 십자가에 못 박히신 주 예수 그리스도를 시간 믿음으로 찬양하기 원합니다 사랑하셔서 사랑하셔서 주 옆에 말씀하신 대로 보니 
주님께서 아버지의 뜻을 주실 줄 믿습니다 일차게 박수면서 찬송가 백사칩이 작창합니다. 
할렐루야 이 시간 우리가 묵상으로 주님께 간절히 기도하는 시간 되기 원합니다 Let us fervently pray to our God in silent prayer at this time May this worship be given to Father God in spirit and truth wherever we may be so that our worship is acceptable to our God and He will answer all of our prayers. Let's first pray for our nation. As our founding pastor told us, rest assured for I who is called is here. As we pray for our nation, I believe our God will cast away all of darkness and all the problems. Let's also pray for the general election that's coming up. And let's also pray for our church and all of our prayer, prayers, personal prayers. No matter how weak we may be, if we just go toward our Lord, He will give us new strength, cleanse us from all the impurities, and restore us. Firmly believing in this, let us praise as we draw nearer to the Lord.
우리가 마음을 담아서 쉽게 가게 원합니다 내가 주께로 내가 주께로 다시 한번 생각하기 원합니다 내가 주께로 Let us pray in silence. Let us begin the third day of the Passion Week with the silent prayer. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is a day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 133.
Elder Ho Jun Seok will pray on our behalf for this worship service. Beloved Father God, you have come to this world to live with us and dwell among us. And this, this one final Passion Week, you have went through this excruciating anguish all for our sake, and we thank you so much. You have set apart us from this tribulation that has engulfed this world so we can come here to worship you. We thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us by giving us a social distancing so that we do not go to the places we should not go. You should not do the needless things. Father, although right now there is a great famine in our lives, we believe that you have already granted us the special blessing that you have bestowed upon Isaac to gain hundredfold blessings in times of famine. Father, we are supposed to be a dead sacrifices to be offered up to you in the temple. But we came into your temple live and lifting up our own voices and we have defiled the temple as a result. So, Father, we ask for your forgiveness. We repent for all the sins that we have lifted up and raised our voices instead of following your word, instead of putting ourselves to death. Father, we repent for not bearing the fruits of light, the fruits of righteousness, fruits of goodness, and fruits of evangelism. And we pledge today that we will truly live a life they will bear fruits for your glory. So please forgive us as we come to the third day of the Passion Week. We see our Lord Jesus who has come to this world for our sake, yet he is constantly afflicted because of this conspiracy and evil plots of men. You were not able to have a sip of water. You were persecuted all day long. Despite of this, you loved us to the very end. We try to speak to us one more word. And we are today thinking about the suffering that you had, hoping that we are able to partake in the suffering and we can take on 
the denouncing and persecution and afflictions on her behalf. Father, we know we can't do this, but your grace will make us able to do this. So please make us as the defenders of your word, defenders of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you know how much we're praying for our nation and our people, for our countries facing such a dire moments right now, and our people are really afflicted at times like this. So we ask for your compassion and remembrance. Help us to fill the portion of our prayers so until the 19th, we are able to give all our best to fill the portion of our prayers. But may this never be for our own self-righteousness, for our own emotions, but help us to truly trust in the scenario that you have, you have for this nation according to your redemptive administration. Father, help us to truly pray and and strive according to your will. As we come to your message tonight, empower us with the Holy Spirit so that we will not miss even a single word from understanding. And please save this planet that is afflicted with illnesses and chaos. We pray that Paul Kishers and the Mitzvah's choir will drive out all the darkness from our hearts so that we can perfectly receive your word. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was suffered on our behalf, who was humiliated on our behalf, by his name we pray in thanksgiving. Amen. Today is a day of defense. The bread of life that God has given us comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 to 27, Mark chapter 11, verse 20 to 33, Luke chapter 20, verse 1 through 8. Matthew chapter 21, verse 23 to 27, we will read only this verse. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source, from heaven or from men? And they began reasoning among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And answering Jesus, they said, We do not know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the word of God. Amen. At this time, our choir will sing through the recorded video.
Today's title is a day of defense. Our founding pastor will proclaim the word through a video sermon. People can live a century, a hundred years at the most. Have you ever been so genuinely grateful for the fact that the living God has extended your lives to this day? We say we believe in God, but we were so busy with the things of this world which stole all our time. So how many hours a day have you spent to worship God, create for yourselves, your family, your church, and your country and people, also singing praises? It is a prayer with melody. How much time have you prayed through praising throughout your day? Not many hours. Even just 10 minutes would be great. Of the 24 hours a day, those who pray to our God, our God who listens to dawn prayers, when you pray with fervent heart, beating your chest in tears and dawn prayers, then you will live a successful life. God will directly intervene in your life, fulfilling all your wishes, giving you all the blessings ever written in the Old and New Testaments. Psalm 5 verse 3 says, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. Psalm 88 verse 13 also says, so please don't skip dumb prayers. How frightening is sin? The progenitor of mankind, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God's word not twice, but just once. As a result, as in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, death came to all mankind. This death, the Lord himself said, this death is the enemy of the human race. The purpose of Jesus' coming was to destroy this death, to resolve death, and he lived 30 years of private life on this earth and then three years of public ministry. And now, the day after tomorrow, he will be brutally beaten and caught. Just as prophesied in the Old Testament, one of the beloved disciples will come and bite the heel of Jesus. God came to this earth in human flesh. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh and came in truth and grace. And that is Jesus. And this Jesus will live only tomorrow and day after. Let's say that you have a child who is retarded. And if he knew that you would die the day after tomorrow. How would you feel for your child whom you gave birth to? We say we believe in God. Yet, when he came for us to resolve our sins, how could you live such a wonderful life that you're laying around at your house during Passion Week? Let's think about this. Am I speaking of nonsense right now? For you, my son is without sleep, enduring all mistreatments and misunderstandings, fleeing here and there, starving, being ragged, 
God forsaking His throne to come down to this earth is the suffering itself. That is a crucifixion itself. So you must be here at dawn. Today is the third day. Passion Week starts on Sunday. The King of Kings made a triumphal entry to Jerusalem. This year, our church is not witnessing a king who is welcomed in glory. But we behold Jesus carrying the sins of mankind amid the crowd who just does not understand. And the 12 disciples who are blind with their eyes wide open, with none in the entire human race to fathom his heart. Yesterday, we talked about how each nation has its national flower. Japan has sakura, a cherry blossom. China has plum blossom. And we Koreans have the Korean rose, also known as rose of Sharon. Israel is a fig tree. Jesus cursed the fruitless fig tree, saying, there will be no fruit from you ever again, and no man will eat of you. At his single word, it withered all the way down to its roots. So this morning, Peter spoke of this. We, and they saw this yesterday. Being Christians, how can we not know we, when each chapter of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was spoken by Jesus? If someone asks you, how old are you? Who does not know one's own age? Which high school did you go to? Which year? Which year did you graduate? Wouldn't you able to answer that? Likewise, you say you believe Jesus, and this is a bread of life and the word of salvation, and yet you don't know which year or when, at what point of time Jesus spoke such and such word in the four Gospels. Shouldn't you know that much at least to understand the grace and kneel down to pray before God? Today is day of debate, debate or defense. So day of defense. Those who conspired against Jesus were the chief priests. So for Presbyterians today, we are like a chief moderator of the General Assembly and the pastors, so the Pharisees, scribes, and the elders. They plot to kill Jesus, and their plot has reached its climax. They would gather at the synagogue and then they moved to a house of some chief priest and at the house of some elder, all discussing how to kill Jesus. So how can you and I, being believers of Jesus, be at ease and relax at home during a Passion Week? No matter how busy you are, this is Passion Week. In order to be filial children, to honor the parents, shouldn't you at least fathom the heart of the parents, right? Today, those who plot to kill Jesus gathered and discussed how to trap him, to hook him and make him fall. They were planning such plots. So today, 2,000 years later, yes, we may be late, but we should still realize how they were trying to trap and bound Jesus with their own conniving tricks and take the faith of 2,000 years ago and tell them, not a chance. Jesus, one moment please, and stand before Jesus to defend him and debate in his place. Isn't that what are we supposed to do? Today was such a stressful day when our Lord was afflicted all day long by the chief priests, the priests, Pharisees, scribes, 
and the elders. All day long he suffered. Luke chapter 20 is about today, Tuesday. This is something you can never ever forget. Luke chapter 20 is the third day of our Lord's suffering. This happened on Tuesday. Like this, you must remember forever. This fig tree that Jesus cursed, it withered completely. Not after several days, but in less than a day. So, among the twelve disciples, this quick-tempered Peter first asked Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed a morning ago has withered. Jesus then taught them about the greatness of faith and prayer at the time. On this third day of Passion Week, through the Lord's message, we must realize how we have not prayed in faith, or if we had any faith at all. As in today's scripture reading, if we have faith the size of mustard seed, now a mustard seed is very, very tiny, half the size of a sesame seed. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree to be planted in the sea, it would obey you and be uprooted and planted in the sea. Matthew also says, if you have faith the size of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Don't doubt a bit. Just ask in faith. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 also says, All things for which you pray and ask believe that you have received them. Matthew 21 verse 22 also says, All things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. You have been Christians all your life and you pray for yourself. Wondering, did God hear my prayer or did he not? What are you going to do if you keep getting older like this? God's authority was powerful. King David gathered the royal officers and his son before his death and prayed. As in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 10 and below, he said, God's hands have power and authority. He makes poor and rich. He kills and makes alive. So is 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 through 8 a lie? Israel's kings and the prophets in history prayed to God so they could believe and live well. When King Hezekiah went into the temple and lifted up his hands and prayed to God, the 185,000 men of the Syrian army, remember one division today has 10,000 men. So 18 divisions instantly fell dead overnight. Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, was so distressed that he went to his goblin demon, the god whom he served. And while he was there, his own son drew his sword and struck his father's head. This was all because of the prayers of just two men, the prophet Isaiah and King Hezekiah. What about Gideon's 300 men? When he prayed, did he hear, you prepare spears and the swords? This just does not make sense in human mind. 
prepare torches and pots. Company one, company two, company three, hundred men each. They are humans, so how could they not doubt? God said to prepare not the weapons, but torches and pots instead. So how can they have any power? Knowing this, God said, Take one of your men and go down to the Median's camp. They went and heard people talking in a tent, saying, I had a strange dream last night. What was the dream about? Well, this loaf of barley bread tumbled down and shattered us. Whoa, that is a sword of Gideon. We are doomed. So as they were fleeing, they ended up killing one another, and 12,000 men died that night. 15,000 men became Gideon's captives. How powerful is the prayer of faith? This morning, Tuesday, God is speaking this to us. After his resurrection, Jesus said to his beloved disciple Thomas, Thomas, do you believe me because you've seen and touched my wounds from the nails and the crown of thorns and beating from the cross? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Thomas, yes, sir. Please do not be unbelieving. Be believing. Who is the most unfortunate? The one whose husband died? The one whose wife died? Yes, orphans are unfortunate too. Unfortunate are those who have nothing to eat. The landlord raises the rent and you have no money. So you are about to be evicted. That's unfortunate too, but some are more unfortunate than this in this world, and they are those without faith. Those who do not believe and pray in faith. They are the most tragic, the most unfortunate people. On this third day, from early in the morning till the evening, Jesus was all skin and bones like a drenched tent in the rain. He was so thirsty, and not a single person brought him some cold water. So we must understand the word today and say, Lord, here is some cold water for you. There is a Jewish proverb. When the Jewish people go to school, their teacher is called rabbi, right? And the students can tell whether their teacher has faith or not. And if the teacher has faith, the student would say, he has a faith to move the mountains. And there is such proverb. Jesus healed this man with epilepsy and they shocked the disciples and Jesus said what's this strange look on your faces if you have faith like a mustard seed you would command this mulberry tree and it would be uprooted and be planted in the sea how can a mulberry tree be planted in the sea right it's impossible for human beings then Jesus said, what man cannot do, everything is possible with God. They were dumbstruck. What can they say? He's saying that God can do all things. As we saw in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, how great is the power and authority of prayer. You may have a personal illness, or frustration that no one knows about. We all have that. So how then can you not pray? Yes, you are tired in the morning since we are humans. But we must get up from the bed by faith, brush our teeth, wash our faces, and come to church. God said through King Solomon, I will hear when you pray in the temple. I will fathom your heart. 
When you come out to church and pray, I will answer all that you pray for. This is written in 1 Kings chapter 8. Also, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 speaks about faith. Faith, people with really strong faith are listed in chapter 11. Faith is assurance of things hoped for. Assurance. Look at this bell. I can see this clearly, right? So how can I not know that it's a bell? But by faith, you know there is a bell without seeing it first. When God speaks, faith is assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So the bell will appear. This is the world of God's word. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then he says, he must believe that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You may say, I don't care about reward as long as I don't go to hell and go to heaven. What else would I ask? You must not do that. Yes, there is salvation, but please know that there surely is a reward according to your deeds and your faith. Whatever you sow, you will reap. James chapter 1 verse 6 says, Can somebody read please? Let's read together. When we believe Jesus, we must always be busy. We have to be very busy. Our Pyongyang church members must be thankful that we have electric rice cookers nowadays. How awful would it have been if there weren't any? You could act charming to your husband and say, Honey, check the rice cooker. I've made all the side dishes too. Where are you going again? Han, this is a passion week. What do you mean where I'm going? You must know how blessed you are to have a wife like me. Surely, blessed is he to have a wife who believes in Jesus. Look at those women of this world. For the world to see their hair, they would spend not hundreds but thousands of dollars. The dresses, the handbag, the bracelet, the earrings. Nowadays, they have yellow hair. God is not a fool. We are from the line of Shem. The line of Shem naturally has black hair. Some people could look kind of mean if their hair is too black. So you can color it just a little, just a little. But don't turn it into blonde hair. Then you will look kinder and gentler and right. Jet black hair could come off too strong and mean. Also, women also must wear makeup. An old saying has it that both a house and a woman must be decorated. Without makeup, it would be better to see a corpse. So please wear your makeup. How wonderful would it be to be beautiful while evangelizing and homemaking? Oh, what was I saying that we are talking about this now? Let's turn to James chapter 1, verse 6. Let's read together in faith. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7 and 8. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Ask in faith without any doubting. If you say, Oh, will my prayer be accepted? Will God answer my prayer? Will he listen to my prayer? Then you are unstable, like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So please believe in this. Everyone believes, so why can't you believe? I believe. I 
I've never been to a movie theater in my lifetime. Instead, I'll read the Bible from Genesis. This is more fun than any drama. It surely surpasses those splendid movie screens or plays at theaters. All of that, and more than that, is here in the Bible. When you get married, you cannot determine things by the wedding presents given by the bride to the groom's family or vice versa. How long will that one carat or two carat diamonds last? And stuff like that happens, gently close your eyes and imagine the kingdom of heaven. If you see in Revelation chapter 21, wearing this one on the finger would look ridiculous because the entire gate is made of gemstones. All precious stones. All precious stones covered with pearls and um, uh, uh, all the stones on the 12 gates are covered with pearls and precious stones. Do you still want it on your finger? Are you kidding? If you just walk in and out, you're completely covered with gemstones. No matter how much you love your dress, you have to wash it and take it to cleaners, right? But in the kingdom of heaven, there's no such thing as laundry. It is the world of glory, seven times brighter than the sun. The light is that bright, got it? And we are going to be clothed in such lights. Try looking at the sun in a clear summer sky. We can't because it's too bright, right? You can't go blind by looking at it. After taking a walk in a broad daylight, try going to a movie theater. It's not completely dark in there. It still has some light in there, right? But if you suddenly walk into dark places from bright place, you can't see a thing, right? Just like that, when you don't have faith, your heart will always be full of darkness. It said in Luke chapter 11, verse 34, the eye is a lamp of your body. When your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light. But when it's bad, your body also is full of darkness. So please check if your heart is not in darkness. Luke chapter 11, verse 34. So please, be believers. I don't know which theologian said this, but he said, you are a true believer if you can hear a rooster crow from an egg. They teach this at seminaries. Also, no matter how much they went badly in attacking Jesus, Jesus did not hold anything against them. Instead, he forgave them. We too must have such great forgiveness forgiveness it's in Mark chapter 11 verse 25 after speaking about the greatness of prayer and faith Jesus said to love your neighbors as yourself love your enemy feeding your enemy when he's hungry praying for your enemy now this is not possible as human beings we must listen carefully to this message that Jesus is giving us today, Tuesday. Despite being beaten so much, being spat on, punched, wore the crown of thorns, hammered with nails in both hands and feet with all kinds of cursings. What did he say on the cross? How painful is it when you accidentally slam your finger while hammering? And the moment of such excruciating pain, who cares about your parent or husband or wife or children? The moment you get hurt, you say, ouch! And you forget all about them, right? But for Jesus, with both hands and feet brutally hammered, wearing the crown of thorns, lashed countless times with the whip that has animal bones or metal strips at the tip, stabbed with the spear on his side. And yet he forgot all the pain and said, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. We have received that spirit don't say, I ain't going to that church ever again. 
If the Son of God goes to, that, to heaven, I refuse to go to heaven. If you sinned like this in your life because of your anger, then please believe that the word is speaking, that Jesus is speaking to you today and forgive and have peace in your heart. I pray this blessing in the name of the Lord. Our Lord said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present the offering. Write down, please, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. Then from the parable of a fellow officer, Matthew chapter 18, verse 35, let's read this together. Matthew 18, verse 35, is at the very end. Let's read together. My Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. If you don't forgive from your hearts, God will not forgive you either. We must have no enemies. And when your enemy is hungry, feed him. Is that possible when you're so furious because of that person? For instance, because of that son of gun, your family was ruined or your husband died of stress. So can you forgive that person? This person who ruined my son or my daughter, can you still forgive him? Yet Jesus says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Pray for your enemy. Also love your enemy. We humans cannot do this. But then how can we do this? It's possible through faith in Jesus. Do you understand? This is what Jesus is saying today on Tuesday. So please, don't ever forget this from now on. All your good works for God's kingdom, your firm faith in Jesus, and your faithful church life, all of that will be recorded in the book of life. But all the time you didn't work for God, but worked for the world, will not be recorded, not even for a single second. Jesus therefore said, first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Next, let's talk about Jesus' authority. The chief priests, the Pharisees, the elders, the scribes, they all wanted to kill Jesus in the end, thinking, we can no longer make our living if he continues to exist. The church leaders in those days were lovers of money, as written in Luke chapter 16, verse 14. When they exchanged people's denarii into shekels, they took away so much interest. So wouldn't Jesus cleanse the temple? Their questions were about his authority, a three parables of warning, tax to issues, questions on the resurrection, on the law, on the Messiah, warning against the scribes, and the widow's two cents. The widow's two cents. Jesus spoke all of this today. Jesus spoke all of this today. 
people attack Jesus with such picky questions, which never ended. If one finishes, then the other attacks. If he answers them, then someone else attacks. From the early in the morning until late in the evening, Jesus was so afflicted. And so according to scriptures, this was the day of defense or debate. Passing the whole day just debating. Earlier in our scripture reading, when Jesus was walking here and there in the synagogue, the chief priests, the priests, the scribes, Pharisees, and the leaders saw Jesus and hated the sight of him. Oh, you are the son of a carpenter in Nazareth. We know your mother and your father. We know all your brothers and siblings. So how can you say that you came down from heaven? By what authority are you coming here to speak all of these things? Who gave you the authority? Because they were appointed by Sanhedrin. They had this ecclesiastical authority. But Sanhedrin did not recognize Jesus, right? Because they believed that all the religious authority came from Sanhedrin. Look at Look at how they challenged Jesus. When the apostles testified, remember they were told, by what authority are you preaching? Stop testifying, Jesus. Jesus was a heretic. When people said this to the apostles, what did the Jesus' disciples, his apostles say? Write this down for your reference. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. This is something you must never forget. Let's all read this together. Let's all turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read together. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Ready? When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, By what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If we are on trial today for benefit done to a sick man, as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel. Let's read from verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. We cannot hold back from testifying what we saw and what we heard. You be the judge whether it is right to heed to men or to God. So having learned this from Jesus, wouldn't his beloved disciples, the Peter and John, not use this? Let us witness the wisdom of Jesus. Mark chapter 11, verse 27 through 33, we read earlier. How precious is this? Let's read just once more. Let's read together. Ready? They came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him and began saying to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do these things? You see, Jesus was walking in the temple without any permission. 
They could do that because they were acknowledged by the assembly of Sanhedrin. So they asked Jesus, by what authority are you coming here and speaking of all these things? So Jesus replied, I will answer you if you answer me. Was a baptism of John from heaven or from men? So either way, they would be in trouble. If they said from God, from heaven, then the next is then how then you could not believe in God. Isn't this authority from God? You must have believed. So, or if they said from men, then they would be caught because many people know John as a prophet. So knowing that both answers would be a trap for them, they answered. We don't know. So Jesus said, nor will I tell you by what authority I do these things that happened today. And Jesus escaped their trap. From early in the morning till late at night, they tried so hard to trap him and kill Jesus. But every time Jesus answered and escaped so wisely, so easily, how amazing is Jesus. When we see this, isn't Jesus, whom we believe in, so wise? So we who have no wisdom, of course, we should pray to Jesus to give us the wisdom. How awesome would this be, right? Luke chapter 10, verse 2 to 12, and until verse 17 through 20. Now, in the end, so right then, Jesus collided with the religious leaders, but in the end, Satan, the chief, will come because Satan had sent its underlings into the hearts of these wicked ones. But realizing that this won't work if they kept resisting Jesus this passively, Satan the chief himself came down at last. Now they became stronger and more proactive in persecuting Jesus. And Jesus saw this. The 70 disciples when they sent in pairs to preach and testify the coming of the Messiah, when they came back, people surrendered to them, even the evil spirits obeyed them. So the king of the demons, the Satan, saw this, and that this is not, this is not going well for them. So this prince of the power of the air came down and crawled into the chief priest, elders, leaders, and underling pastors, and their hearts were hardened, and they became evil. That's how they attacked Jesus more viciously. So Jesus said, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in the book of life. You don't know if your name would be written in the book of life or not, so will you be happy just because these underling demons are subject to you? As more days go by, as time gets closer for my brutal death, Satan, the chief himself, will go even more crazy. How do you know this, Lord? I saw Satan fall from heaven. Do you understand? Let us together turn to the Bible. We'll finish after this one. Turn to Luke chapter 10. From verse 17. 20. In the end time, it will be the same. That's in Revelation chapter 9. The star falls from heaven, 
And he will drive the world into bad darkness. Prophet Isaiah also prophesied about this in Isaiah 14, verse 12. The star of the morning, the sun of the dawn, will fall and enter into the people who are testy, who have no faith, who don't pray, and turn them into the most wicked beings, who will persecute the church and make people stop believing. That's why we must wake up. Ceasing to pray is a great sin. People who have no faith are the most pathetic and unfortunate people. They are the worst beggars. No matter how high class you are, how rich you are, if you have no faith, you're nothing but a bloody beggar. This is not something your senior pastor is saying. This is all in the scriptures. Let's read Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. The 70 returned with joy. Let's read together. Loud, please. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will endure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Do you understand now? Don't rejoice because these demons are subject to you just for a little while, but rejoice that your names are recorded in the book of life in heaven, okay? In the last days, Satan will fall, the morning star from heaven. It will torment the entire human race, and nations will fall into darkness. When you go home, please read Revelation chapter 9 and Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 and below. Jesus was so busy defending and debating from early in the morning until late in the evening. He was so thirsty, his mouth was so dry, but not a person brought him cold water. So he said, surely I say to you, anyone who gives cold water to the little one, he shall not lose his reward in heaven. Jesus was known as a heretic. So would people who believe in their pastors come to him? Jesus wandered in this street and on that street saying, the prophecies in the Old Testament were all about me. I did not come out of my own will. I came according to the testimonies in the scriptures. Doesn't John chapter 5 verse 19 through 39 say this? People consider Jesus as some enemy or as some contagious leper. So nobody wanted to come to him. So please, today, don't do anything unnecessary and postpone everything until after the resurrection Easter. You know that the Lent is until Saturday morning. It's until Saturday morning. So this year in 2001, it's from February 28th until Saturday morning. In all godliness, please have a big anticipation for the Lord's resurrection and work while embracing the sorrow of Jesus. So historically, you cannot get married during the Lent season or the Passion Week. No birthday parties, 70th year celebration, all of that should be pushed until after the Resurrection Sunday. Uh, can't you uh, reconsider of your wedding date? Can you have wedding at other times? But so stubborn was this person. That's why I ran away to Seocheon. So please don't have your wedding at times like this. If you knew your son would die the day after, would you be still thinking about setting a wedding date? Let's say the big son's wedding date is day after tomorrow. But the doctor says today, your second son will die the day after tomorrow and says, please prepare for the funeral. Would you still be having your wedding? 
How could God come for me to be cursed because of me, starved because of me, naked and beaten with fists countless times? They lift up Jesus' face to spit on him and whipped him and kicked him. He is our Savior of life. He is our Creator. And he knew all about this and still came. So as his believers, how can we turn away from him and spend all our energy on your sons and daughters? I am showing you the way to live a good life. So please don't do this or getting marriage, whatever, during Passion Week from now. Let's say it's your birthday tomorrow. How wonderful would it be if you do the celebration after the Passion Week, after the Resurrection Sunday? Who cares about the dates, right? A day of the feast is your birthday, right? If you can't have a good bowl of rice, no food to eat, no fire in the furnace, like in the old days, then how could that be a birthday? If you can't go to someone's house to have a hearty bowl of soup and rice, that is birthday. So who cares about the dates, right? So please, everyone, be spiritual defenders for Jesus, please. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Sir, we can take this, Jesus. Just be still. Let us stand before Jesus and say to those people, what is all this fuss about? If you have any question, ask me instead. We should be at least like this to debate and defend our Jesus. That should be on our minds. Don't be sticking to Jesus like a leech no more, crying, Lord, Lord, please give me, give me. You have already received enough. Don't you know the old saying that there is joy in giving and being given? I have given up myself and shed my blood on the cross for you. Yet what have you done for me? How are you going to answer this? In grace, let us all become our Lord's spiritual defense attorneys, standing on His side, bearing all His weariness, carrying His cross, and race toward His kingdom. I pray all of this for you. Please lift up your hands. I didn't say to stretch. Please lift up your hands. Say Amen, Hallelujah three times. And let's pray fervently until the bell rings. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Our living Father God, to solve the problem of our sins, our Lord has entered Jerusalem. And went through such agonizing time of debate as all the religious leaders attacked Jesus. And you have defended the word of God. Our living Father God, through the debate, you have manifested glory. You're not able to have a second sip of water to reveal the glory of God. And now that we learn this today, as we're following the footsteps, our Lord, Father, we, it's, we want to repent before you. We want to be renewed so that we can stand right by your side. Father, through the Passion Week, help us to truly walk the path of suffering with our Lord. And as we come upon the day of resurrection, help us to resurrect into people who are pleasing in your sight. Father, may every member of Pangong they are not able to uh, come into sanctuary to worship you because of coronavirus. But Father, wherever they may be, bless them so they can have repentance, they can experience renewal, so that with this boundless grace, may we all become the people of faith who are pleasing to your, to your sight. We thank you and we pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing, let's sing hymn number 275. 275장 찬송하시겠습니다. Our Father God, thank you for blessing us to realize how great faith and prayer is. Are we going to be the most unfortunate people because we don't have faith? Or are we going to overcome nations by having faith? Father, as we are standing here at this crossroad, Help us to all engage in powerful prayer without any doubt, so all of our answers and wishes will come true. Father, we desire to really remember the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ and truly forgive and be reconciled so we can become central leaders of redemptive history to save lives. Father, we're so thankful that we lift up these offerings to you. Help us to have a genuine heart like that of a widow who gave two cents to you in this time of famine. When we help those who are in need, Father, you said that that is a lending to God to help us to show the good work to many people by helping those who are in need. In precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
It's no time for announcement. From April 6th until 10th, we're going to have special Passion Week services online. Um, for dawn services, it will be it will start at 5:30 a.m. from Monday through Friday, at uh, Monday through Saturday. The evening service will be held at 7:30 from Monday to Friday. All of this will be given online. April 12th is Resurrection Sunday, the Easter Sunday. Let's really remember the grace of the resurrection that destroyed the power of death and truly prepare thanksgiving to our God. Let's sing hymn number one, conclude the service with benediction. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, abounding love of our Father God, and the inspiration, fellowship, fullness, and dwelling of the Holy Spirit be upon all those who desire to follow the steps of the Lord's suffering for renewal and repentance. And all the homes who are worshiping today online, upon the church and upon this country and from now and forever, evermore. Amen.